Hi, and welcome to Equatorial Guinea. Take a look on the map. It's one of the strangest layout countries you'll ever come across. The country is basically divided into three. You've got the island of Bioko, which is closer to Cameroon, on which is the capital of Malabo. You've then got the mainland part of Equatorial Guinea, just north of Gabon. But if you head southwest of Equatorial Guinea, you hit the country of Sao Tome and Principe. And if you go past Sao Tome and Principe, you then get to the little island of Anbon, which is part of Equatorial Guinea. Now, a lot of Equatorial Guinea is in what's called the Cameroon Line. That's a line of dormant and perhaps not dormant volcanoes that stretch from Anabon in the southwest up through Bioko, where Malabo is, up along the Cameroon and Nigerian border. Most of the volcanoes along this slot are dormant, except Bioko, the main volcano here, last erupted in 1923. In fact, Bioko is made up of three volcanoes, the highest stretches to around about 3,000 metres above sea level. Maybe if it was a sunny day, I'd be breaking out the tops and cracking a wave here. This looks like a pretty cool beach. Now that's not a bad waterfall. And this goes straight to the beach just over there. Pretty awesome. Seriously, how many waterfalls in the world do you know that basically go from a cliff to the beach? There are not many of them. And this one's pretty cool. It's a really lush tropical environment here. And in fact, the southwestern slopes of Bioko get nearly 10,000 millimeters of rain every year. Another way of putting that is 393 inches for those of you who think in the old way of thinking or are American. Now, Equatorial Guinea is a former Spanish colony and depending on how you count Western Sahara is the only Spanish speaking country in Africa. If you count Western Sahara as a country, which I do, then it's one of two Spanish speaking countries in Africa. So it got its independence in 1968 and President Francisco Ngema declared himself president for life until he was overthrown in a military coup by his nephew. And his nephew, Obiang, has been ruling ever since and is described by the BBC, the British government, Human Rights Watch, as one of the most brutal dictators in Africa. It's a funny dictatorship though because you don't feel it on the streets. You don't see the police. You're not really harassed that much. The odd checkpoint, yes, when we're driving around the island, but it doesn't feel like a dictatorship on the street, but you speak to local people who look over their shoulders and say, be careful of who you're talking to. Now, there are about 1.7 million people in Equatorial Guinea, about 300,000 of those in the capital in Malabo. By the way, they're building a new capital on the mainland called City of Peace. Now, Equatorial Guinea was a very poor country until the discovery of oil. Now, ExxonMobil discovered oil here in 1995, and that has raised the average income of Equatorial Guinea to one of the highest in Africa. But it's only an average. The disparity is unbelievable. Most of the money goes to the ruling family. And indeed, Switzerland, France, and the United Kingdom have variously sanctioned, arrested, tried in absentee the vice president of Equatorial Guinea who is the son of the president, for corruption. Switzerland even went as far as auctioning off a whole bunch of his supercars. Now, why you have 70% of the population without access to drinking water and the vice president with over 20 supercars that are auctioned in Switzerland and the government claims it's not corrupt, I'll leave it to you to figure out. 
And one of the reasons why it was so difficult to get a visa here and I had to fly to Berlin is because the government of Equatorial Guinea closed its embassy in London and has only recently reopened it and still won't give visas out because they're all upset that the government of the United Kingdom has sanctioned the vice president and son of the president for corruption and money laundering. Yes, of course, because every vice president and son of a president of a very poor country that discovered oil is able to auction off 23 supercars in Switzerland. So in summary, Equatorial Guinea is a very pretty country. There's no doubt about that. It's beautiful, at least here on the island of Bioko. I've only seen the mainland side from Gabon, and I'm guessing it's not that geographically different because it's next door to each other. But it's one of these countries where you remind yourself as an Australian, you're exceptionally lucky for where you were born because the people here, well, no freedom, no hope of freedom. And basically what you've got, it's almost like a principality and everything by name where it's ruled by ruling family that I might as well call a royal family and only the family members seem to have got any of the wealth that's dribbled down from the oil and nothing the international community has done has changed that, nor probably will.